In this video, we are going to talk about the other good sampling techniques. Now, as a little review, we have previously talked about three sampling techniques, two of them bad, one of them good. We had convenient sampling and voluntary response sampling. And then our first good sampling technique was a simple random sample in SRS. And so now, on to option number four, which is really our second good sampling technique. And it's called a stratified random sample or just a stratified sample. Uh, the goal of a stratified random sample is to divide our population into homogeneous groups that we can call strata, thus the stratified, and select an SRS, a simple random sample, from each strata. So notice I've got my green shirt people, i got my red shirt people, so I've divided them by homogeneous or a similar characteristic. In this case, we have all my green shirt people over here, all my red shirt people over here. And once I've split them up into these strata, I need to now take a simple random sample from each. Okay, so I'm doing multiple simple random samples. In this scenario, I only have two strata, but there could be scenarios where I have more than two strata. Uh, and in those cases, I would take a simple random sample from each of those strata or those homogeneous groups. Now this will allow us to obtain a sample that maybe better represents the population of interest uh, versus just taking a simple random sample. Because consider the scenario if this was again our population of these green shirt and red shirt people. And let's say I just want to randomly select, um, I don't know, five people from my population. Well there's a chance that all five of my people could be red shirt people. There could be a chance that all five of my people I select are green shirt people. And green shirt people and red shirt people may have a difference of opinions on whatever topic I want to question them about. So if I think that there's going to be a difference in some way in how certain people will respond to my question of interest, then I might consider doing a stratified random sample. So I've got two examples really to kind of for you to consider uh, a stratified random sample. So first we want to survey a hundred high school students about food preferences in the cafeteria. So I could just do a simple random sample and out of let's say at our school we have 2,000 students and so if I want to take a random sample of a hundred students there could be a chance that my 100 selected students um, maybe they're all freshmen and will freshmen have the same food preferences as say seniors? Probably not. So if I really wanted to get a good random sample and make sure that I get um, as close as possible to equal representation from each grade level, then I might split up my 2,000 students into grade levels. And I have my freshmen, maybe I have my sophomores, my juniors, and my seniors. Now let's say at my school, let's imagine in a perfect scenario, there's 500 of each of those students. And so if I wanted to survey 100 students, then I would split that up four ways. And then maybe I take a simple random sample of 25 of the 500 freshmen. I take a simple random sample of 25 of the 500 sophomores and so forth and so on until I have taken really four simple random samples of size 25 each that I then combine together to get my ultimate sample size of 100. The other scenario, in a survey about social justice issues, we want a sample that reflects the local population that is 60% white, 25% Hispanic, and 15% black. So this, we can already see what those strata are. We're just gonna have people separated by white, Hispanic, and black. So if I had my whole population of white people, um, now, I don't necessarily want to take equal representation because there's not as many white people as there are Hispanic people as there are black people. So if, and I didn't say what my sample size needed to be, um, but let's say I wanted an, or well, not say SRS, but I want a sample of 100 people, then out of my sample of 100, then I would want 60 of them to be white, I would want 25 of them to be black, or Hispanic, sorry, and 15 of them to be black. So that when I add up all those people together, I have my sample of 100. 
And that way, my stratified random sample is more representative of the entire local population. Because again, consider if the over 50% of my population are white people, there's a chance that if I just took a simple random sample, I could end up with like maybe even 100% of my sample are white people. And then Hispanic people and black people won't have their opinions voiced um, in whatever you know survey I want to ask or questions that I want to ask. Now, sampling technique number five, which is our third good sampling technique, is called a cluster sample. And cluster samples and stratified random samples will look and feel and smell very similar to each other. But they are not the same. So these are the two, stratified and cluster, are the two most common ones, I would say, that are asked on the AP exam, besides a simple random sample. And for good reason, because they're the two that are most widely used and the most widely uh, confused between each other. So a cluster sample is when we're going to divide the population, but instead of homogenous group, we split them up into heterogeneous groups, which means that there's a nice mixture of people within each group. Now, I will say that we typically do not divide the population into these groups, but those groups are already kind of preformed. We don't necessarily make the clusters. The clusters are already there. We just need to recognize the clusters. And then instead of taking an SRS of um, people from each cluster, we randomly select an entire cluster and take all of those people in them. So in my picture, Notice I've got five clusters here. And notice in each cluster there is a mixture of green people and red people, right? There's no one cluster that has only green people or only red people. Some of them have two green and one red. Some of them have two red and one green, okay? So what I would do is I would have these as my clusters, and then I would randomly select, uh, in this example, I randomly selected two clusters. And you can see they're the ones that are kind of spotlighted here. So if I randomly selected this cluster and this cluster, then I would take all three of these people and all three of those people. And the clusters that didn't get selected, then those people are not a part of my sample. So this allows us to obtain a sample that, again, closely represents a population of interest as well, like a stratified. And so again, we're going to look at those two uh, same examples that we did for a stratified, but we're going to talk about how we could view these instead with a cluster sample. So first off, our 100 high school students that we want to ask about their food preferences. So again, we want to kind of consider that freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors might have different food preferences, and so we could do a stratified random sample, but is there a way that we could do a cluster sample instead? So we might want to consider, are there pre-formed clusters already at a school that would have a nice mixture of freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And so one example that we could use at our school, for instance, is that um, our study halls have a mixture of freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. So what we might do is we could call our clusters, all of our study halls, and then take an SRS of however many study halls, depends on how many people are in each study hall. Um, let's do an example here. Let's say each study hall has 25 people in it. That'll make for a nice example here. And so we would want a simple random sample of four study halls. And so four times our 25 people per study hall would give us our 100 high school students. Now, Will there be a guarantee that we'll have equal representation of 25 freshmen, 25 sophomores, 25 juniors, and 25 seniors? Probably not. Um, but at least in this way, as long as our study halls have a mixture of all four grade levels, then this would be an acceptable, um, a, a, an acceptable way of taking a survey of 100 students, keeping in mind that each grade level probably has different food preferences. Now, the other example it definitely gets a little trickier to try to imagine how on earth we could have clusters. So again, the social justice issue, but we have a population that is 60% white, 25% Hispanic, and 15% black. So we got to think of like what kind of preformed 
groups or clusters would almost naturally exist in a local population. And so one thing that you could consider uh, might be looking at just different neighborhoods. Now, you would want to try to find neighborhoods that closely reflect the population. So you wouldn't want to consider any neighborhoods that were predominantly white or predominantly Hispanic or predominantly black. You would want to try to find neighborhoods that had a similar, it doesn't have to be exactly 60, 25, and 15, but something close-ish to that. Um, now, if you had neighborhoods that were predominantly white or Hispanic or black, then you just wouldn't consider those as part of your clusters. So this gets really tricky to try to find clusters that you could kind of naturally pick. And it doesn't have to be neighborhoods. There could be other things um, related to that city where maybe you would see 60% white, 25% 25 Hispanic, and 15% black. So again, that one definitely on the trickier side. Now, to show you side-by-side -side comparison of a stratified versus a cluster. Stratified, we had homogenous groupings, which meant that there was a similar characteristic within each group. Like, we just had freshmen, that was their characteristic. We had sophomores, that was their characteristic. And we had a junior group and a senior group. But in a cluster sample, we had homogenous groupings, meaning we had um, basically already a mixture of everything we wanted to see. Right? We had our study halls that had freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors all in them. Then it comes down to how do we randomly select in each of these? So in a stratified, we randomly selected some people from each and every strata that we had. Right, We selected some freshmen, some sophomores, some juniors, some seniors. We didn't select all of the freshmen, but just some of them. Likewise with the other three grade levels. Versus with the cluster sample, we randomly selected some full clusters, and then we took everyone in those clusters that we randomly selected. So that's the two key differences here between a stratified and a cluster sample. All right, good sampling technique number, what are we on, four, which is the sixth overall, is called a systematic random sample. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys. This one and the next one really aren't hit too heavily on the AP exam, but they're really good like multiple choice filler answers, right? I would say most of the time, SRS, stratified, and cluster are going to be the main ones that the AP exam is really going to go after. And then, you know, they're like, we need two more multiple choice options. What, what, what other kind of random samples could we use that are good? And systematic and the next one usually will follow. So I'm not saying they'll never ask questions about this one and the next one, but chances are they're not probably going to ask too many questions on these, if any. So for our systematic random sample, we are going to arrange the population first. We can either literally line people up, or we can have people kind of lined up in a spreadsheet, for instance. And then we're going to select a random starting point. So notice I've got this star right here. And so let's say I just randomly pick this person. Okay, they are my random starting point. And then I'm going to select every kth person until I have my sample. Now, k in this case represents our population size divided by our desired sample size. So I'm going to use my school as an example here. We have a population size of about 2,000. And let's say I wanted to get a sample of 100 students. So my desired sample size of 100 goes here. So 2,000 divided by 100 would make k equal to 20. So I would select every 20th person to obtain my sample. Where do I start? With my one random person, which I selected here. So if I call this my first person, then I add 20 on down the line here, or I look at the, you know, the 21st entry in my spreadsheet, then the 21st person, that's my second person really that's in my sample. And then I add 20 more onto that, and then the 41st person is the third person in my sample. And I keep going along the line or my list, going every 20, 
until I get through the entire list. And I might have to wrap back around at the beginning of the list if I don't make the list start at specifically uh, this person and call this person my first person. But you may have to wrap back around to get to all 100 people that you want in your systematic random sample. Now, systematic random samples work great when you have, say, a database or a spreadsheet where you have a full list of people that you can easily kind of order. And it's usually easier to perform than an SRS because you already have this nice list. But there's unfortunately the potential of having more bias than an SRS. Now, the last one, and this is the least used one out of all of our sampling techniques, but is really used in very common, like big cases with big populations and big samples. It's just called a multi-stage random sample. And all it really represents is any two or more sampling techniques that we've previously mentioned done consecutively. So for instance, if we have a huge population, we can slowly whittle it away into a good sample. So for instance, what if we started with the United States? Um, we could use the states as strata, and we randomly select some, I don't know, what could we randomly select? We could randomly either just randomly select some people from each state, or we could randomly select um, counties, let's say, from each state. And then in each county, for instance, um, we could do a cluster sample. And we could take a county and split it up into its cities. And so we randomly select some cities, and then we select every person in that city because it was a cluster sample, and we take everybody in a cluster. And so once we get a city, then maybe from that city we do a simple random sample. And we only take so many people from each of these cities that we selected from our clusters that came from our states that came from the entire United States. So those we will not really cover very much, but you need to know what they really represent. Now, for the last problem, I am going to leave this one for you. It says, the manager of a sports arena wants to learn more about the financial status of people who are attending a basketball game. He plans to give a survey to 500 fans in attendance. There are 30 sections going around the arena from section 101 to 130. And so notice in my picture down here, um, those sections are kind of more going vertically up and down. So here's the floor down here. And then here's your nosebleeds up here. But we got section 101 covers all the different seats. Good seats to nosebleed seats, section 102, likewise, all the way around the arena till we get to section 130. So really section 130 and section 101 are technically adjacent to each other. All right, and each of these sections contains 250 seats. There are 25 rows per section, and we call those rows A, which is our floor level, all the way up to Y, which is our worst nosebleed level. Now, rows A through E, those tickets cost $200 each. And rows F through J, they cost 150 bucks each. K through O, 75, P through T, 50, and U through Y cost $25. So what I would like you to try to do is to write a scheme, like describe to me how you would take a stratified random sample using the lettered rows. Okay, so I'm telling you what to use as the strata in this case, but how would you go about taking, in general, a stratified random sample using the lettered rows? You don't actually have to do the stratified random sample, just describe to me the process that you would use. Then I want you to write a scheme that would take a cluster sample, but using the numbered sections instead. Again, you don't actually have to carry out the sample, but just describe to me the process of doing a cluster sample. And then once you've done those two, and I want you to think about which of the two types of samples, the stratified random or the cluster, do you think is better? And can you give me any sort of explanation why you think the one is better than the other? Good luck, and we'll talk about this one the next day in class.